Hey guys, it's Mick Meany here and thanks for stopping by. So today we're going to talk about how you can increase your revenue by setting the right goals for your website and how you can actually profit from cold traffic. But before we get into all that, before we start, let me give you an example of the end result of getting this stuff right. Okay, just have a look at this. Now these are actual stats from a website that we just set up a couple of days ago. This is obviously Google Analytics. And here we can see that we're already getting over a thousand visitors to this website every day. Now this is a brand new website. Let me tell you about this, okay? This is really interesting. Now, before we did anything, before we set up the website, before we installed any themes or published any content, before we did anything, the very first thing we did was to decide on what the traffic level should be. So in this case, for this particular website, we decided that around 30,000 people a month would be a good figure to work with. So that's around 1,000 people a day. So we gave ourselves, well, we actually gave ourselves a week to hit that target for this website. So after a week, we wanted to be seeing around 1,000 people a day. We actually smashed that target and we got there on day two. So the day after the website went live, we started to hit that target. And you know, this is all organic traffic too, which is kind of amazing, right? So as you can see, we started sending traffic to the site, you know, a couple of days ago. So the bounce rate here is gonna be fairly high. And if we go down, we can see which languages the traffic speaks. So we see that 82% of the people who visit this website speak American. English. This is the most valuable type of traffic to have. Next, we see 9% are UK English, and then finally we see that 2% are Canadian English. So this means that more than 90% of the people who visit here speak English, and that's a very profitable. That's a very profitable type of traffic to have. So we actually want, our target was to get 70% of the traffic to come from just three countries. The goal that we decided on was that at least 70% of the total traffic would come from the USA, Canada, and the UK. So let's confirm that at least 70% of the traffic is actually coming from those top three countries. And here you can see that over 60% alone comes from the USA, 11% from Canada, and 7% comes from the UK. So, if we add all this up, again, we're smashing the target because we were seeing 80% of the traffic coming from these top three countries. Now you might be thinking, what if all this is just a fluke? Well, to prove that goal setting is important, I'll show you another example in a second. But listen, I could show you the traffic I get to root for my flagship website, but I'm not going to do that because I think, well, you know, I think that would be kind of unfair because that site, it's been online for ages. It gets millions of hits. I've never spent a penny on advertising. It's even had its own TV show, which is a lot less exciting than it sounds. But it's unlikely that you're going to have that kind of advantage. So instead, I'm only going to show you results from brand new websites. So you see what's possible when start setting goals to a new website I only want to give you realistic targets that you've got an actual chance of achieving it's pointless me showing you millions of hits and then expecting you to replicate that from the word go it's just not gonna happen so okay have a look at this site which is another brand new website and this one is collecting stats with jetpack now I really like using jetpack because the data is right there inside the WordPress dashboard but I do think it can slow down a blog so I don't have to explain this I don't think so the target that we set for this website was again a thousand visitors a day and again we smashed it in fact as you can see we frequently get more than four times the amount of traffic we expected so how did we do this well it really does all start with setting the right goals. I mean, think about it. When you invest your time into making awesome content that you feel proud of and 
that you feel passionate about, you deserve to earn something back from all that hard work, right? Now, the traffic sources don't matter too much, as long as it meets a certain criteria, which I will go into with you in a minute. This is great because you can pull traffic from any place you like. It means you can pull traffic from anywhere. And the thing is, not to get too hung up on any single traffic source. I mean, we can get traffic from anywhere, really. I mean, social media, from the press, from the search engines, from other blogs. It really doesn't matter. There's loads of places we can get traffic. I mean, getting traffic, that's the easy bit. Knowing what type of traffic exists, and what to do with each type is the tricky thing. Now, this is important because if you don't get that right, if you don't set the right targets, then your website is just wandering aimlessly. And that means it's not getting the amount of traffic it needs. It's not getting the right kind of traffic it needs. And it's not making the revenue levels that you want it to. So the cool thing about this, though, you know, it is up to you to set your own targets. And that's why we build websites and blogs and create content and sell products, isn't it? So we can live life on our own terms and the websites we build are just a reflection of that so you get to decide what kind of results you want so when you start setting goals you know where you're going you know how much traffic you need you know what kind of traffic to get and you know how much revenue that will make for you now from this point forward i'm going to assume a few things okay the first one i'm going to assume that you know who your audience is. I mean, so many bloggers can't answer this question, okay? And if you still don't know who your audience is, then just go have a look through the Profit Copilot videos that I've made, and I'll show you exactly how to find out who your audience is. This part is important because if you think that your audience includes everybody, that it's a general non-specific kind of audience or if you think that your blog will appeal to everybody then I've kind of got some bad news you'll actually end up reaching nobody I mean you know the worst thing you can do is put content in front of someone who isn't specifically interested in that type of content what happens is instead of attracting them to your website what happens is you repel that person from your website possibly forever I need to repeat that because I'm seeing some of you guys making this mistake and you don't need to you see choose a single topic for your blog choose a single topic and publish content that's only about that topic if your blog is about technology don't publish stuff about weight loss you know unless there's some kind of um, angle that relates it to technology so keep your message consistent keep it constant and keep it tightly focused on one specific topic, one area of interest. So if your blog isn't getting the kind of traction that you want at the moment, then double check that you've got this fundamental step done right and you know exactly who you're talking to. So go watch my videos about this and you'll, and you'll get it fixed. Okay, so let's carry on. Next, I'm going to assume a few more things. I'm going to assume that you have a website and you're creating some form of awesome content. And then I'm going to assume that you have an advertising budget, even if that budget is small. I mean, this is probably how you drive traffic to your website. And then finally, I'm going to assume that you already have, or you're at least planning to have some kind of sales engine or some way to generate revenue from your website. If you don't have that yet, then don't worry. We'll go through all that stuff in a future video. So with all that in mind, if you recall, I had a previous video where I showed you the three layers, the three levels of a sales funnel. And I showed you how the top of the funnel is all about creating awareness. It's about planting seeds, introducing people to your brand, to your content and to your message. Then I showed you the second stage, the middle of the funnel. And that's all about how people will start looking for solutions to the problems. They'll be appraising products and solutions and they'll be looking at your stuff. They'll be considering your products. And then finally, 
we have the bottom of the funnel, the conversion stage. This is where people become the much needed buyers. Okay, so for each of these stages, we have a different type of traffic. Okay, at the top of the funnel, the very first layer, we have cold traffic. At the middle of the funnel, we have warm traffic. And then right down at the bottom of the funnel, that's where we have the much desired hot traffic. Now, this isn't anything new or groundbreaking. In fact, it's the standard way that most things are done online, okay? It's a tried and tested formula that most people use, most successful people use. So that's how we know it works, right? And you know me, I only stick to the stuff that's proven to work over a long period of time. And that's exactly what this is, it's proven to work. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the top layer, the top of the funnel, because this is where you have the greatest amount of exposure. This is where your message will have the largest reach, the largest number of people consuming it. Most bloggers actually just live in this stage and most aren't even aware that another level exists beyond this. Okay, so here we're dealing with cold traffic. That means most of the people who visit your website or see your adverts don't know who you are. They've probably never heard of you or your business. Cold traffic is actually very important because it's the lifeline of your business. It's the new blood that you're putting into your business. And listen, I know that cold traffic isn't as exciting as other types of traffic because it doesn't generate immediate sales, but it is very important because without it, most of your revenue will dry up. If you're not reaching out to new people and bringing them into your business, then you're not getting fresh leads and you won't make as many sales. So eventually your business will stop growing, okay? And listen, if you have a new website or if you have a new business, then all of your traffic is going to be cold. So at this stage of the funnel, it's all about creating awareness and seeding ideas. So you're creating awareness about your business. You're catching people's attention and you're giving them some kind of value. You're also letting your visitors know that they might have a problem that you can help them with. And when you start delivering value to your audience, you start to build a relationship with them and you start to build trust with them. But a mistake that I'm seeing lots of people make and you know, even people who should really know better, people who've been at this stuff for a few years, I'm seeing lots of awesome bloggers and awesome content creators pouring cold traffic on the middle of the funnel offers and even on bottom of the funnel offers. And this is a huge mistake. I mean, listen guys, if you're sending cold traffic to a sales page and expecting people to buy from you straight away without getting to know you first, then you're setting yourself up for a bit of disappointment. Sometimes I hear that a traffic source doesn't work. You know, for example, um, people sometimes tell me that Facebook ads don't work or that Google ads don't work. And then when I look at the system that they've put in place, more often than not, it turns out that they've got the stack wrong. So that means they're sending cold traffic to a sales page, which of course isn't going to work. And then they blame Facebook or they blame whatever place they're advertising on. If you've done that, or if you're currently sending cold traffic, to a sales page and not getting the results you want, then just stop. You're not at the right stage of the relationship to ask for the sale yet. It's like walking up to a complete stranger and saying, hey, I know you don't know me, I know you don't trust me, but please buy this from me. It's just not gonna happen, right? So, I've got a better way of doing things. And the best way to approach cold traffic is to think of it as a way to introduce yourself. I personally use it as a way to say to people, hey there, my name's Mick, and I'm going to show you how to make your website more profitable 
here's what you're going to learn from me that will let you do X, Y, and Z. So there's actually three things at work here, and I'll tell you about each of them in a second. Okay, but first, let's figure out what the goals of cold traffic should be. This is what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to accomplish from your campaign. Okay. I know I've just said the word campaign there, and all that really is, is just a way to engage someone and run them through a sequence of events that results with them buying your stuff or taking whatever action it is that you want them to. So, since we're talking about campaigns, the truth is every stage of your funnel is in fact just another type of campaign and they're really, really easy to do. If you've been following my videos for a while, then you'll already know how easy they are to make. So now we're going to talk about the goals of your cold traffic campaign. There are three steps here. The first one, like we've said, is to introduce yourself. Then we pixel your audience, and then finally we segment your audience. I'll go through each one of these in a bit more detail now. The first goal is obviously to introduce your brand and deliver value. We put your message in front of the people who want to hear it. Then you deliver value, which builds trust and establishes you as an authority, like we've already said. Now, the second goal is to deliver a pixel to your audience. That means when someone visits your website, they've already expressed some kind of interest in you, right? So we use a small piece of code don't worry about the code, it's just a copy and paste piece of code. It's really simple to do and it lets you re-engage people after they've left your website. So you just paste that into your website. So how it works is let's say that someone visits your website and they read a blog post. You can then run ads on social media that will show up for that person. So you take cold traffic and then you pixel them you send them a pixel through your site so you can then continue the conversation with them later on. Even if you're not running ads at the moment, it's still a good idea to pixel your audience because Facebook still collects that information and it can give you a better idea of who your visitors are and what they're interested in. Okay, so the third goal is segmentation. Now, this is really clever because you're targeting the specific interests of your audience. This is really powerful. It works like this. Imagine that someone reads one of your blog posts and your blog, let's say, let's say the post is about house training a Labrador dog. Let's pretend that your website is about dog training and your visitor is reading a blog post about Labradors. We now know that they are specifically interested in Labradors. So we look at dog training as the broad topic and Labradors could be a sub niche. Now this allows you to make specific offers to that person. Another example could be, well, let's say you have a technology blog and it's all about phones. So phones could be the broad topic and you have subtopics like um, iPhone and Android. So with this formula, you're introducing yourself first, then delivering value, then you're pixeling your audience so you can re-engage with them later on, and then you're segmenting the audience so you know their specific interests, so you know which offer to make them later on. Right, so that's incredibly powerful, right? Now we need to know what to say to the cold traffic. We know we need to know what to talk about. We need to know what kind of offers to make. And by offers, I don't just mean what products to sell them. I also mean blog posts and PDF reports and videos and well, anything else of value that you can offer them. This is important because if if it's not of something that's of interest to your visitor, no matter how great your advert is, no matter how great you are at getting traffic, none of that will matter because your visitor just won't respond to it. So I'm going to give you a list of the most common types of content to offer cold traffic. So the first one 
is also the most obvious and that's blog posts and this can be educational or practical it can help them to solve a problem or show them how to do something at this stage you're not asking them to do anything yet you're just giving them something of value up front without asking for anything in return so this type of content is great to give them up front because it helps them to see you as an authority okay the second type of content we can deliver to cold traffic is social media so we can post a social media update just as a promoted post on Facebook that's enough and it's a great way to show the personality of your business and really speak to your target audience they are also great ways to grab attention then we've also got a quiz and surveys both awesome to give to cold traffic because they get people interested and then finally there's lead magnets so we can give these away in exchange for email addresses so you give them something that they want something that's genuinely a help to them and then they give you the email address so I'll be kind of cautious about using lead magnets at this stage because sometimes they're better used on warm traffic as opposed to cold you see lead magnets they can be used for both cold traffic and warm traffic so they're okay if you need to generate leads quickly but you will usually get better results with warm traffic this can obviously vary from niche to niche so if your business is b2b then you might be better off with using a lead magnet up front it really does vary I've personally had good results with offering lead magnets first so it might be something that you want to split test for yourself now some markets will respond really well to these so do consider it so to help you really understand this process let's have a look at an example here we've got a Facebook ad from Thrive Themes now I love these guys they really inspire me and I really like their style so this is one of their ads that I see from time to time in my newsfeed and as you can see it's just a normal ad that links to a video they've made they're just giving valuable content and building a relationship that way it's a short 10 or 12 minute educational video really simple stuff right of course they encourage visitors to go further into the funnel on this page they invite people to subscribe to the mailing list but at this stage of the funnel at the top of the funnel I would guess that this content is also being used to pixel the traffic so they can start selling to the traffic later on okay here's another example for you and this one is from copywriting course another company that I'm happy to endorse because they do awesome stuff and again this is a straightforward Facebook ad and this one also links to a page full of content and establishes trust that way right one final example just to demonstrate the point one last time here we can see a Facebook ad from active campaign which is another company that I have great respect and admiration for and as you can see the ad links to a page full of content that delivers massive value up front okay so all these companies have a few things in common don't they they're all industry leaders they're all highly trusted and respected and they all deliver value first before asking for a sale well okay then so now you know how to benefit from cold traffic you know it's the starting point for most websites so you know how to embrace it you know how to use it to your advantage so know who your audience is and no matter how you're driving traffic to your website or to your blog decide on a realistic number to aim for so you want to keep your traffic levels somewhat consistent and then you have some basic figures to work with that will allow you to work out your revenue so then we've got the three steps to engage cold traffic which is to introduce yourself while delivering value which in turn builds trust and then you pixel your audience so you can follow up with them later on and then lastly you segment your audience so you're giving the right offers to the right people the right kind of content 
to provide to cold traffic. So blog posts, social media updates, videos, surveys, and quizzes all work really well. And then we've got lead magnets, which can be used to, you know, cautiously. And then finally, I gave you some examples of how leading companies manage their top of the funnel strategies. So you've now seen how Thrive Themes do it, how Copywriting Course does it, and how Active Campaign does it. Right, that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? So you've probably got some fresh ideas now and some fresh motivation, new inspiration. So I'll call it a day for the moment so you can go and get rolling with this stuff and start seeing some awesome results. Okay, great. I hope you found this to be of awesome value. And if you have, then you might like some of my other videos and podcasts and they will help you to get outstanding results too. And you can get them by signing up at profitcopilot.com forward slash subscribe. Okay, great. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you again next time.